Hello there, my name is Faisal Ahmed and I'm a teacher at Emory Adult Learning Center here in Toronto. And I'd like to talk to you today about Doug Ford's reopening plans for schools that's coming right up in uh, September. So, first of all, adult schools. You may not have heard of them before, but let me tell you a little about them. There are five adult schools in Toronto. There's City Adult Learning Center, Burnham Thorpe Adult Learning Center, Scarborough Center for Adult Studies, Yorkdale Adult Learning Center, and then finally there's Emory Adult Learning Center where I'm teaching. And they're relatively small compared to the, I don't know, hundreds of normal teenager schools that we have here in the city, right? But they play an important function, right? Because what they're for is letting adult learners get a high school degree, uh, usually so that they can go on, go off to college or university. Uh, the majority of students that go to these schools, or at least certainly Emory, I think all five really, uh, are from immigrant and refugee backgrounds. The majority of students are people of color, and the majority of students speak English as a second language, right? So these schools are really integral for bringing a significant chunk of the population into the workforce and letting people who may not have had access to an education get an education. If you see this graduation picture here, uh, you might notice that there are a lot of women in that picture. And that's because about 62% of adult learning center students, uh, at least in 2015, are women. Right, so you're looking at people of color, you're looking at immigrants and refugees, and you're looking at women, right? So uh, it is a group that uh, often can be considered to be vulnerable. So uh, let's talk about COVID-19. So the first thing that should give anyone anxiety when it comes to reopening adult schools is age. Right, because age really does matter when it comes to this virus, right? And as you can see here by this chart, and this is based on our 2015 uh, numbers, uh, adult school students are run the full gamut of ages, right? We've got some students who are 21 to 25 years old, uh, but most of our students are either in their 30s, 40s, or even 50s. And in fact, I can tell you, based on my experience, that I've had students go all the way up to 70 years old, right? And that is normal, and it's fine, right? I don't mind having all of these different students in my class, right? 21-year-old sitting next to a 70-year-old in my class, that's all good for me. But as everyone who has been paying attention to this thing will tell you, uh, as you get older with this COVID-19 virus, you become more vulnerable, right? These are the numbers from Ontario going up to May 17th, right? So not exactly up to date. But as you can see, you get older, you get more vulnerable. Obviously, 80 plus is the most vulnerable group, right? But 40 to 40 died, 50 to 50 died. Those are uh, still people that can get extremely sick and die from this thing. So if we were to reopen uh, adult schools recklessly, right, the students themselves would be in a much more vulnerable position than a teenager might be, right? Teenagers also can get this virus, they can spread it, they can die from it even, but at a much lower rate uh, than the an older person would. But if an adult student gets it, well, you know, adults often have uh, pre-existing health conditions, they can have diabetes, they can have all sorts of things that can make this virus even nastier than it usually is. And so bringing adult students back into a building uh, poses a unique challenge and a unique danger to them. The other issue is the ideas of social distancing and social bubbles, which the province has been 
uh, pushing for all of it, all of us Ontarians for the last couple of months, and rightly so. So, the idea of the social bubbles is that you should maintain a small number of people in your social circle, perhaps 10, perhaps, I, I forget, I think Doug Ford raised it to maybe 50, I, I, I can't recall exactly, but the idea of a social bubble, nevertheless, is that you maintain uh, social distancing from most people, but you have a small group that you interact with on a daily basis. Family members, co-workers, and everything like that. Now, now, in theory, the government's plan to have these uh, quadmastered cohorts, 15 people in a class, all of that, in theory, you could see that as being able to do school with social distancing. And ultimately, that boils down to what the teenager's day is supposed to look like, right? A teenager's day is supposed to be wake up, go to school, go back home, right? That's what I think Doug Ford and his government is thinking when they're putting that plan together, right? That essentially, uh, the student would be exposed to 15 people in their classroom, right? Socially distanced classroom, and then their family, and then that's it. Right uh, now, uh, I know my fellow teachers from the teenager side of the school system will say, well, hang on, that's just highly theoretical and, you know, uh, keeping them separated in the building uh, while uh, uh, they're all there, especially for the elementary age students, which I'm not even going to get into, uh, might be a little impossible. But, you know, you can at least understand the theory of it, right? But compare this to adults. So an adult school student's day is a lot different. They're going to be waking up and then they're going to be dropping their school, their children off at either the daycare or school that they go to. Then they're going to go to their own school, usually late. And uh, most Emory students are often taking one period or two periods a day, right? So they're going to be at the school for maybe half a day, and then they're going to go off to work at a part-time job of one kind or the other. They're going to be going to pick up their kids from daycare. They're going to be going to do groceries, right? Some of my students are going to be driving Ubers or whatever it is, right? And then finally, they'll go home after that long day. So... The social contacts that an adult student uh, makes in a day are much, much higher than what a teenager will make, right? In theory, the teenager can go from school to home, school to home, right? Uh, hopefully, they don't have to work a job at the same time. Hopefully, uh, you know, their parents can, you know, even arrange transport for them, right? So in theory, a student of high socioeconomic status certainly can do the homeschool home thing. An adult student does not have that luxury. And let me show you some more numbers. So adult students work, first of all, right? As I said, 37% of adult students are employed, 25% are working part-time, 9% are working full-time. And you can imagine with CERB coming to an end and with the pressures that many families are in, uh, the number working part-time or full-time are only going to have to increase, right, due to financial pressure, right? If your spouse has lost his job, uh, then you might have to, well, pick up more work for yourself. So... Uh, that's the number one thing. The number two thing is we should pay attention to that graph at the bottom there, right? Uh, average adult school uh, student, right, and this is household income, is earning less than $30,000 a year, right? Which is a staggering number, first of all, right? Uh, just in, even in normal times. But the average uh, adult school students, their household is looking at under 30000 a year. So what that means for us is that you can't stop adult school students from working. They need to, right? You got to survive. Uh, often these students are have children 
as well as everything else, right? So, you know, you can't tell an adult student, uh, you know, you shouldn't be going to work while you're coming to school or worse yet, you shouldn't be coming to school at all, right? Because the reason they go to these schools is so that they can address that situation and go to college and get a good job where they can improve their socioeconomic status. So what that all adds up to, going back to COVID, is the idea of social distancing or social bubbling for these students is, quite frankly, a little ludicrous, right? Sure, you can limit it to only 15 people in the room, but all of those 15 people have adult responsibilities, they have uh, adult concerns, and they can't not work. They have to work, right, in order to survive. So what that's going to add up to is something I am very afraid of, right? I'm going to be walking into a classroom that, sure, there might only be 15 bodies inside, but every single one of those students uh, will have been going to drive Ubers, going to uh, do groceries, going to you know work in warehouses, work in factories, work in all sorts of different places. And so the chance of someone coming in with the virus with no symptoms and spreading it to everyone else is very high. And when you combine that with the age issue, quite frankly, I'm worried that people are going to die in my courses come September. Now, what should we do instead? So, uh, in my opinion, the safest thing we can do is keep our classes online for the time being. Uh, adult school students uh, need to have access to resources in order to um, you know, get access to uh, the course website and to type their essays and everything like that. But they can do it, right? I've taught two classes and a half online now, right? Um, you know, I did my quad four all online last uh, spring, and I did summer school as well. And adult school students can do that. And quite frankly, some of them even prefer to do it that way because they can, you know, play my lectures while driving their car or something like that. So adult school students can go online. They can participate in classes successfully if they just have the opportunity to do so. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, I know that in-person teaching is better, right? You know, there's no substitute for being able to sit next to a student and look at their work and say, hey, a comma should go there, or you forgot to capitalize this, or whatever it is that we're teaching. But we have to live with this uh, situation, right? And adult school learning can be successful online, right? Is it as good as it was when we were all in the room together in a school? No, it's not, right? I'm not going to lie about that. But we can still do it, and at the very least, it doesn't have the same dangers associated with it as going back to school in person does, right? So the number one priority, I feel, of a school board should be for the health of its students, and that's what we need to guarantee. Universities and colleges all around Ontario and all around the world are going online this year, right? Either fully or partially, right? One of my former students who's uh, going into U of T engineering told me that all of her classes are going to be online uh, for the duration of 2020 and 2021, right? And, you know, I think that's a wise health decision by the university. And I think we can do the same uh, at least at first, for the adult schools. So that is what I feel we should do. I'm just one guy here. I'm just a normal teacher doing English at an adult school. I've taught for seven years, and my hope is that you've listened to this video and you've been persuaded. Please share this video with anyone who you think would be interested in it. And please write to your MPP, get in touch with your trustee, 
right, try to spread the word about this because I don't want to minimize this. If we do school opening incorrectly, particularly of these adult schools, then we are going to see people die. So thanks very much for listening to me. I hope that this video was helpful.